Russia's growing threat stretch from the front lines in Eastern Europe to power grids right here in the United States. The Department of Homeland Security issued a new warning about Moscow having the capability to carry out a range of cyber attacks against important websites and critical infrastructure. So for more on this, let's bring in CBS News cybersecurity analyst Chris Krebs. He's also the former director of the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, and he joins us now to talk about this. Chris, it's good to see you. Um, so explain to our viewers just, just how sophisticated um, is Russia at conducting these types of cyber attacks? And I guess the more important question, Chris, is how good are we at countering them? Yeah, so Russia, particularly their security services known as the FSB, the S uh, SVR, and in their military operations, the GRU, are very good, uh, unfortunately. They're, they're, in fact, some of the best in the business. They've had a lot of practice over the last several years and have really refined a, a different, you know, a various set of tool, toolkits to infiltrate government agencies, critical infrastructure, and do it in a very quiet, pernicious, long-standing way. And, and so, yes, they, they are quite good. In fact, they're, they're one of the best out there. From a defensive perspective here in the U.S., we've gotten better. I think the real challenge, though, is that we are increasingly, as a society, dependent upon a variety of digital services and products, which gives uh, any adversary, whether it's a criminal organization or a sophisticated state actor, lots of options. It's, it's known as attack surface, and we have a pretty significant attack surface. But I think we have built up over the last few years a resilient infrastructure where any, uh, you know, any sort of cyber attack doesn't really have a broad uh, national level impact. They, they would tend to be fairly localized. You, you know, you talk about our attack surface. Did, was that one of the lessons that we learned from the solar winds attack that it, it seemed like suddenly we found out that solar winds was attached to all manner of companies and and government agencies and so attacking just one um, company had a ripple effect or even you know the ransomware attack on the pipeline that they ended up shutting down the pi pipeline not because the pipeline was being attacked but because they were concerned about the possible fallout it should there be more attacks um, are we learning that, you know, our, our attack surface is just entirely too large or too connected? Well, I think I think that's part of it. I, I also think we learned a, a different lesson from solar winds, and that was that it's no longer the big banks or the defense industrial based companies or the government agencies that should be concerned about Russian or Chinese or Iranian cyber activity. It's really everyone that plays a key part, particularly in the information technology supply chain. There are hundreds of companies that play pivotal and critical roles that are now on the targeting lists of these uh, these sophisticated actors. Kind of the, the joke I use is is back in you know the heyday of bank crimes, where uh, Willie Sutton would get asked, "Why do you rob banks?" and his answer was, "That's where the that's where the money is." Mm -hmm. Same thing goes for cloud services and technology companies. That's where the access and the data is right now. So we need to continue to improve the security along our software supply chain. So Chris, I guess the question is, um, to me, so we know that this is potentially something that could happen. We know that the Russians are actively trying to do this. Do we have the political will and the resources? Sounds to me like we need to revamp um, our grid systems. We need to, we're talking about infrastructure here. We need, this is a critical infrastructure of this country. We need to yeah. revamp uh, our grids and a number of other uh, surface areas that are vulnerable with these attacks. Do we have the political will and the resources to do that? Well, I, I wouldn't over-rotate necessarily on the immediate risk to American critical infrastructure based on a non-zero chance that the Russians may go into Ukraine. I don't think that there's necessarily a uh, an American critical infrastructure targeting package in the first strike as the Russians may roll into Ukraine. But if we do levy significant sanctions upon them uh, or we otherwise get involved in a defensive response, I think that puts some different options on the pack on the table for the Russians. And they've spent quite some time, several years, in fact, really scoping out what matters here in the U.S. And, and to, to the earlier point, uh, you know, the colonial pipeline disruption last summer 
really showed what gets everyone's political attention here. So I think more broadly, though, I, you know, you, you mentioned infrastructure package. You talk about the president going to Pittsburgh. I was a, a you know a pretty vocal advocate of cybersecurity requirements and spending in the infrastructure bill. Uh, cyber is infrastructure, unfortunately. And so we, we have to start baking in security uh, considerations and priorities into really any economic investment we make going, going uh, forward. Because these digital dependencies, these digital connections we have in our everyday lives are only going to increase for the, frankly, the rest of human history. And so this is a, a that, that next frontier of crime, of espionage, of uh, disruptive attacks. And uh, you know, every single business leader needs to be thinking about how they may contribute, unfortunately, to uh, some sort of economic disruption if they don't take security seriously. Right. Chris Krebs, thank you very much.